Hi, I'm M, and I'm going to show you some of Greg Lobanov's audio tool that he made in Game Maker to put sounds into Wandersong. I'm just going to show you some of the really basic stuff so you get your head around what a sound designer might need if they want to put sounds into your game. So first of all, layout wise, we need an area to organize our folders and a way to change the different behavior of how different kinds of sounds will interact in the game. And we need a space to mix, which is just changing the volume or pitch or different kinds of settings of different kinds of sounds. So first, the most common container is what we called a choice container which essentially randomizes the different sounds so that you don't get these patterns happening and have people noticing repeats. And every time it gets to the end of this list, it just shuffles them. If you do want it to be a pattern for anything sequential, you can make them happen in order. Another way the choice container is useful is if you want a sound to be continuous or ongoing. So say you have an ambience of a jungle and you want there to be this weird bird every once in a while. And you want that bird to happen between random intervals so that it feels like a real bird as opposed to having it baked in or playing at the same time as the looping ambience, which a loop constantly repeats. So if I had a bird playing in a loop every time, it would get to sound repetitive. If I play this bird, it'll play between six and one second, and it'll play it at a random volume. Which could mean it's near or far. And if I want, it could also I could also play it at a random pitch. It's nice to have these default buttons because I often just randomize something by the same amount every time. The next kind of container we have is a head loop tail container. And what that does is takes a looping sound and gives it a beginning and an end. So this can loop for as long as we want and then when we stop it, it'll play the end sound. And we have these parameters here that we can also fiddle with that can kind of change. So if we want, you know, a delay of one second and it to fade in for a while and then maybe it fades out too, we can do that there. It's always really good to be able to adjust this kind of stuff based on the different needs of the sounds. A long fade out. <laughs> the third type of container we have is a multi container, which instead of playing one at a time like the choice does, plays all of them at the same time. And we can either have them just play on top of each other, or if we make it a blend, we can play them in a sequence. So I can adjust the how they fade in and out of each other and you know depending on what is happening in the game this is a pretty complicated sequence um, so say we start here and then we want the next ambience to slowly fade in and then that would fade out and so on so, you know, that can go over anything, it can be arranged any way you want. To make these work, we have to give them a parameter, which is, in this case, chaos end, which can then be programmed in to match where we want them to happen. So we do that here, parameters, and these are all the ones we have so far. They are extremely useful for creating more dynamic and interesting soundscapes for your game. 
One of the most important processes of sound implementation is mixing, which means adjusting the volume and playing the game over and over and making sure everything sounds good together because it'll sound a lot different when everything's playing at once than when we're editing in our workstations. So it's really good to have a system in place to make mixing as practical as possible. We use a busing system to organize all of our sounds, which we assign here based on whatever container we're in. And then every single container that we've labeled as ambience will be turned down depending on how much our bus is turned down. This is also extremely useful for Foley because if the camera is zoomed out by a lot, then you won't want the Foley to be playing footsteps at the same volume. You'll want the volume to go down. And when they're on a bus, you can set all of that to happen at once pretty easily. Another consideration that you always have to have is performance. So what we had to do was create different groups for all the different sounds to go in. We based it on the sequence of the game and that way they don't all load at the same time. One last really important setting to have is the 3D setting, which when turned on situates a sound in space in the screen. So all Foley and footsteps are 3D settings because they're attached to the player and a lot of ambience aspects are also 3D like this water lap because you can run close and get further away and the sound will get louder as you get closer and further away as you run away. Um, that's called attenuation. And I think that's about all I'll take you through for now. And I hope that you enjoyed hearing about the wonders of sound. <laughs>